Hi everyone, this is Mr. Glazer. We're going to quickly talk about a movement within the progressive era called the temperance movement. So remember the word progressive just means progress. Uh, society, people, the middle class are trying to progress society, make reforms, fix problems, and specifically a few groups of people are going to be uh, the primary drivers of this progress. Uh, women are going to be um, very important during this er era. As we see here, there are several women in this photo, and they're holding a sign, or they're standing behind the sign that says, Lips that touch liquor, alcohol, shall not touch ours. So these women are advocating for people to stop drinking alcohol specifically men saying we're not gonna kiss you if you are drinking uh, a lot of women during this time are going to join an organization called the women's christian temperance union or wct u for short uh, and together women and this these other people protestants catholics christians or what i might call religious clergy are going to join together for what we call the temperance movement. Now, temperance, as it relates to the late 1800s to the progressive era, just means they want people to stop drinking alcohol. They see that there's lots of problems in society because of alcohol that are contributing to many negatives in society, so let's stop drinking it. So their movement is to get people to stop drinking. So we have to remember during the Gilded Age that workers, people in general that weren't rich, are treated pretty harshly. They're working very long hours, long days, more than eight hours a day, sometimes 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hours a day. They're not making a lot of money. They're living in these cheap, poorly built tenement apartments that are unsafe and leave a lot to be desired. Uh, so a lot of men after work want to feel something. They want comfort. So they often turn to alcohol. They go to the bar. They go to the pub. And they drink away their sorrows. They drink away their problems. And then they come home and there's lots of problems that are happening. First of all, they're not being paid a lot, so they're wasting lots of money on alcohol. So families, women, these wives are very upset at their husbands because they've worked all day and they're supposed to be supporting their families, and instead they're wasting their money. That causes tension at home and further could further cause men to keep drinking because they're unhappy. So women, religious uh, clergy, religious people see that this is an issue. They're wasting money on alcohol. Uh, they're abusing their wives at times and abusing their children at, t at times, hitting them physically or verbally abusing them. They might be more depressed because of their life, and alcohol only makes that worse. Uh, they're more likely to commit crime, go out and do destructive things. And they may even commit suicide, um, which completely might destroy some families because their primary caregiver, the primary person who's helping out with the family working is no longer there. So then the kids and the wo woman also have to go to work or have to work more hours. Uh, so let's look at a political cartoon from this era. And as we see right here, we'll just kind of take a step at a time. This guy's drinking. He looks fine. He's doing okay. He keeps drinking sometimes, but eventually he has too much. And as we go through it, he's clearly becoming more drunk. And so that's our step towards kind of becoming a drunkard or becoming uh, an alcoholic. So now, you know, it's one thing to have a few drinks here and there, but to take it to another level, uh, they're going to, some negatives are going to start happening. So right here it's a step six poverty and disease the person is wasting their money and if you have too much alcohol you could get alcohol poisoning you could get sick your immune system lowers so you're more likely to get sick um your friends might start to notice you're a junk it's a step seven forsaken by friends 
uh, you might be shunned or um, your friends might not support you or help you or want to talk to you anymore. Uh, you might be desperate. Maybe you lost your job because you went to work drunk and you're not being productive. So they straight up just fired you. So you're desperate. You might be more willing to do crime. And eventually when there's no hope and you've destroyed your life through alcohol, you may even kill yourself. So women in the religious clergy, the religious people of society, saw that alcohol destroys society, destroys the family unit, and they want to put a stop to it. So they start, again, what we call the temperance movement. So the temperance movement is going to lead to this. Women and clergy are going to work. Women and the religious are going to work really hard to get rid of alcohol. So they eventually achieve this through legislation. Laws are going to be created to stop alcohol. We see here no booze sold here, no alcohol sold here. Stay out. So what this is going to lead to is something called prohibition. Prohibition is basically going to be our 18th Amendment. So Congress is going to pass a new amendment, our 18th Amendment. And remember, 16th created the income tax, 17th let people directly elect their own senators, and now 18 is going to ban the sale, manufacture. You can't make alcohol, you can't sell it. Oh, I put selling twice, that's funny. And consuming of alcohol. So you can't drink it, you can't buy it, you can't sell it, you can't make it. So it's illegal now. So the temperance movement was successful. These women, these religious clergy were successful in achieving prohibition. And if we look at the root of that word, it says prohibit. What are we prohibiting? Alcohol. We can't have it. That's our 18th amendment. So now we're going to say America is what we call a dry society. Here's some primary source pictures. Uh, these guys are literally dumping alcohol down the drain. You can't, they can't sell it anymore. They have to get rid of it. We see the cop making sure they're doing it. Um, these guys as well, literally just pouring out uh, wine and other alcohol beverages into the sewers. Right here, the people that support prohibition, support temperance, are saying vote dry we should vote to make america dry society so alcohol for a time in american history was illegal you couldn't buy it, you couldn't sell it you couldn't trade it you couldn't make it you couldn't drink it let's just look at a few more primary sources uh so it says we have these barrels right here that say booze so of course and there's a wine bottle and others as well these are obviously alcoholic beverages and it says we make people poor people are wasting their money on alcohol we cause poverty and crime. People, you know, as we say, they're wasting their money. They're committing crimes. We're against progress. We rob women and children. We fill penitentiaries and asylums, prisons, and mental institutions. People are more likely to go because of that. We waste grain, realizing that the same things that make food, like breads and other grains, are used to make alcoholic beverages. So they're saying it wastes food when we do this. It leads to waste, it leads to ruin of society. And like we just recalled, women are the main supporters of prohibition. Well, that's a quick lesson on prohibition in the temperance movement. I'm Mr. Glazer. Thanks.